Okay, we're ready to get started again. So if everyone can find their seats. And we have Carla Doudna here from the fairgrounds. And I should say fair and recycling. So she's going to present her budget and um, we have a speaker right there and Mr. Seep and several others are there. So just try to speak as loudly as you can into that. Sure. Thank you. So you can present and then we'll ask you questions once once you're finished. Okay. Talk about we got 15. We have oh, do we have 30 minutes? We do. We were planning on 15 minutes right? for 30 with fair okay. and recycling and knowing that I, I wasn't sure where we were gonna line up here, so I thought we can get through it quicker than that, sure. but I don't know. How we'll move something else up sure. if we get down in 15 minutes. Right. So. My name is Carla Dadno. I've been working at the fair as your Fair and recycling department has since 2015. And um, I guess I'm not sure which budget you would like to start with first. Oh, well, fair, please. Fair. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <That's the object. laughs> so the budget that I presented was um, the $131,025 with just the $15,000 tax levy amount. Which is pretty comparable, I think, to what it was last year when we had our cut of fifteen thousand from the thirty thousand dollar tax levy. So I'm not sure. Well, if, you if there lead, are, if you can lead us through the highlights off the summary sheets that you provide, for oh, sure. Um, it will kind of again kind of walk through the big highlights on that. The the nature of the game is kind of we're looking to kind of cut to just reaffirm what you're doing with the program. Uh, what the big goals are, and then kind of get into how you've had to adapt to the, you know, the limitations that were put in place and recommendations for or trying to reincorporate or reinstate. So we just now started receiving. I think in 2019 we were to receive $30,000 tax levy money. That was asked to be reduced down to 15. Prior to that, we'd always received $10,000 to run the fair grounds, I should say, um, and. Realistically, our revenue is from renting the grounds, leasing out the property and our, our fair that we have. That's how our revenue comes in and from camping. So um, our staffing needs are actually without figuring in all of the retirement and everything is about $27,565. So we struggle with, especially in years that we don't have events or if we lose events or if they're rained out or even like last year with COVID, we had no revenue coming in outside of our tax levy money. Um, so it's hard for people to understand how we use our budget because the $10,000 that we used to receive didn't really even ever cover our utility costs out there, let alone our, our salaries. So um, it's difficult because everything is based off of everybody else is wanting to rent the ground. So it's, I mean, I could inflate my revenue to project any type of budget really that we wanted to present, but that wouldn't be fair to my department. It would be fair to the um, So I try to keep our revenue as realistic as I can. And I try to base it off of the previous year's numbers um, so that if we had a small increase, then I would kind of keep that revenue for the next budget cycle so that maybe that would help us offset some additional maintenance that we might want to do. So our department is not a state mandated. There are no mandates required by the state. It's so it's solely a um, um, service that we provide to the community. Basically, um, it involves the 4-H, it involves the FFA, it involves youth groups like the Girl Scouts, the Boy Scouts, um, any other sort of youth group 
that can participate in the fair. And it also is for our citizens, our community, they open, they enter in our open class. So everything we do is for the community. It's not necessarily anything that's mandated. However, because we do have the fair, there are certain things that we have to do that are mandated by DATCAF when it comes to the fair, but outside of that, there aren't for the fair anyway. Can, can you speak overall about roughly how much money does the fair bring in each year and how much goes out in expenditures and how does that result in the 15,000? Can you give us the big picture view of, I know there's a lot of money coming in, but then your money going out must be just a little more than your money coming in. Well, it again, it, it depends on, so if it, if it rains this year at the fair, any gate revenue that I have estimated of $36,000 could be cut in half. I, cause I can't predict that. Um, if we have vendors that decide to not come to the fair because the weather isn't going to be good, then I refund their money. So, and I guess what I'm asking is what's your 2022 projections? I'm not asking about everything that could happen to change it. I just want to know what. So, Overall, what are you projecting your revenues to be? What are you re projecting your expenditures to be? The revenue is projected at $116,025. And that's obviously a rough estimate with the added $15,000 tax levy in. So that would balance my budget at $131,025. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay, any more questions about the fair? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. C, go ahead. Uh, Carla, do you have any data on the, say the last five or 10 year history of the fair outside of the capital investments that the county makes in the, in the fair buildings and grounds and equipment uh, operationally, has the fair uh, been self-sustaining financially? Not, um, I'm trying to think of past years. So unfortunately, prior to 2019, which was a good year, prior to that, we had a lot of flooding. When I came on board, um, Mr. Seep, I think in 2014, the county board had given the fair $30,000 for their startup money and then did not require them to pay that back. So there was a, a positive revenue when I came into this position in March of 2015. And I don't believe we had a positive ending until 20. 19. I'd have to, I don't have those figures in front of me. That's just kind of talking off the top of my head from what I can recall. So realistically, not always, no. But again, it depends on how the year goes and if the grounds are rented and if we have a successful fair. Thank you. Okay, Mr. O'Hara. Two items on here I want to talk about in your uh, summary here, we talked about if we if we increased the overall operational budget by 25,000 to bring it to a $40,000 uh, levy, it would support three positions in the department. Um, can I have you talk about the advantages and what uh, what that would do for the, the departments by having three full-time staff? Well, it wasn't necessarily for three full-time staff. Um, the groundskeeper is at 600 hours per year. And previously, before um, Mr. Keyes re you know, resigned from his position. Um, he didn't typically work those allotted hours that his position allowed him to. Um, so we have budgeted in this year for um, Buford Marshall to be able to work those. And Christine Haiti is the other department staff, and she usually comes in in the summer and then just helps during the fair. And she can work up to 600 hours. She's never really reached that, I believe. She typically is around maybe 350 or 375, I believe. Okay. 375 is what we budgeted for her. Um, my position is actually, so the fair and recycling is divided. 
when I first started, it was 20 hours a week for the fair and it was eight hours a week for recycling. And that was changed so that the recycling budget or the recycling grant could supplement that position a little bit more than what it was. So it was changed to 12 hours for recycling and 16 for the fair. So realistically, um, I work more than that for the fair and we've never really been able to budget accordingly because there is a resolution that's in place. So I tend to have to do my budget, if I remember correctly in years past, I have to do my budget off of that resolution and not what we what I typically work every year. Does that kind of answer your question? It does. Can I have a follow up for Mr. Chair? Um, with you also mentioned though that you had a, a note on here with your you building. So you mentioned on here with your building volunteers. You recently had some folks that were doing your building volunteering that are no longer interested in volunteering. Uh, pointing that some of our other positions are paid and there was felt unfairness with that. Can I be kind of expound on that one situation and then also tell us how your operations are working or not working with your current uh, structure of relying on volunteer staff? Sure. So the spreadsheet that I provided to you uh, prior to the meeting shows that we have um, we have eight staff in our connection building that are superintendents and helpers in our open department. And I don't know the history on this. I just know years ago the open class was allowed to be paid if they chose to be paid and the junior class was not. So we have some um, junior superintendents that would like to be paid. They feel that if the open class is paid, then they should have the option of being paid. And that's not in our budget. We've typically only budgeted for the eight that we have. Um, so the spreadsheet that I gave you lists out all the rest of them and what that would cost. Um, at the end result, and that's at 25 hours a week, and that was just a rough estimate. Typically, the superintendents and helpers work between 20 and 25. Not to say that all of these people that were highlighted in that um, spreadsheet would take it, but if they did, that's what that would look like. So, um, I ask just one more question. Last one, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair. Thank you. With the more advantages of uh, going ahead with the purchase of a mower for three thousand five hundred dollars. So that was in the budget just to lease the mower at thirty five hundred dollars. Sure. It wasn't to purchase it. Okay, that was a lease. Thank you. Okay. Any okay. other questions about the fair? Now we should move on to recycling. So the recycling budget is pretty much the same every year. Um, roughly, we receive, I think, around $98,000, and a portion of that is taken out for this department, and then it's divvied up between the municipalities based on um, their needs. It's based off of what they spend each year, and we do that grant twice a year. We do it in the spring, and then we actually have that information out to them now for their projected budget for 2022. So that really doesn't change too awfully much. What, what's the impact of the tax levy with recycling? Is there any? There is no tax levy. So it zeroes out your revenues and expenses. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Any and whatever we, I'm sorry, whatever we don't use it has to be returned back to the state. So. Okay. Any additional questions about that? Um, you know, one, just to go back to the fair, I do. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I keep hearing Van Nelson bringing up at different meetings. We should increase the fair budget and the county's going to get a lot out of that. I think I don't know if I'm summarizing that right, but it's almost like he's implying the county could be seeing additional revenues if we invested more in the fair. Is that am I am I understanding what he's saying right? Or what what are your thoughts on that? Well, it could, and really it's kind of a two-part. So if we because there is camping opportunity out there as well, which I think a lot of people forget. There is a, a huge potential out there that we could do that. There also is a huge potential of what we could do in use of the grounds because the grounds are not used really for what they could be. And that's something that we're, we're working on um, 
we have some plans and I've been talking with Stakes and Glass Runner and, and things that we can do to bring that in. As far as the fair, obviously if you spend a little bit more on entertainment, it might bring in people that wouldn't normally come. So instead of say we have the truck and tractor pull on Saturday, if we opened up the, the grandstands to say a comedian or the hypnotist or the cloggers, you know, even though it's it's smaller amounts that go out to bring them in, your gate revenue would increase and would would bring in more people from the community or outlying areas that might not necessarily come. Have, have you have you all developed like a budget request for say? Do you offer camping there now? We do, yeah. Oh, okay. And so are are you saying that if you had increased money to what would it be to put in some infrastructure for a campground? You're saying you could get more camp camping revenue is that um okay so if, mm -hmm, yes. have you all put together like a, um like a cost estimate or like a more more of a formal request for like here's what we would do with whatever amount of money you know like we we haven't yet um i've like i said i've talked to jason some and we've talked to scott we're working on getting some numbers if we Set up the fairgrounds for all city water instead of part city water and cell and, and well water. And what that would be like if we could offer some of the, the campgrounds, the campsites with water. Because realistically, there's actually, I think, 225 campsites on the fairgrounds. And those were utilized a lot during Star Spangled. And that's where a lot of the revenue came from. And when they dissolved, that income for us dissolved as well. I don't know if it fits into the American Rescue Plan, but I thought I heard something about increasing tourism being an eligible expense. So I, maybe I'm making that up. I thought there was something about that. So I guess I'm just suggesting if if the fair gets a little more formal about it, maybe there will be opportunities um, out there. So that's just my opinion on it. Because it'd be great to bring in more revenue. I, mean, oh, I, I think that's a such a positive thing. I, I think overall at the county, we need to be looking. Not every department can do that, but I do think there are certain departments that have a lot of opportunity to, to be bringing in more revenue. I talked to the finance committee chair over in Vernon County, and they're very focused on that. And I, I think it's kind of helped change the conversation. And when I think about your department and some of the things you bring up with the fairgrounds, it, it reminds me of, Mm -hmm. of that revenue focus and, and that could really help the county out so yeah there's revenue in not only camping but actually leasing out the grounds bringing in other groups and the camping connect will be increased when you bring in types of rv clubs that maybe want to have their annual event there i mean there's there's a lot that could be done it's just we need to be able to have a plan and a vision to do that to move forward okay thank you okay, okay. Well, thank you for coming today, Ms. Valdina. You're welcome. Got you done in 20 minutes, so. Perfect, you guys got 10 minutes of fair. Yeah. <laughs> Can I make a comment about the fair? Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I just wanna say that the county fair is, to many people, the county fair is Richland County. For 30 years, I lived away from the county. That's the one time of the year that I had to get back here for the, the county fair. So uh, it's the essence, it's the flavor, it's something that we need to maintain and continue. If there's any thought of discontinuing the county fair. Okay, thank you. All right, Kathy Cooper, Land Conservation, we're ready for you next. Thank you. Okay, so we have Mr. Seep and several other people online. So if you could just speak into that speaker more. Yeah, speaker. I, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I'm handing out grades to these people who speak up so that we can hear them. We'll look forward to your end of day report. See who did the best and worst. <laughs> um, okay, so we have um, 30 minutes allotted, but we don't need to use that entire time. We'll just um, whatever you think and. Um, if you could start with presenting and then we'll take questions from the from the committee. Okay. I'll kind of do like uh, Carla did, which is do the one job, one part of it, and then I'll do parts. So I'll do land conservation first. Um, if you remember last year, um, for the, the two funds of ours that have um, 
pay staff and sal salary and fringes out of, we were asked to cut a position. So I put that in the budget. And then last one was about September, end of September. This committee and then county board voted to put it back in. So I have updated, I was asked to send the updated budget. Well, for some reason, the budget that got put in for us was um, the one with three employees instead of four. So the numbers I used to compare were what, what it should have been with four instead of the three. We did get some good news for land conservation. Um, the legislature and the governor signed the budget for 2022 and for 2023, though we are getting more staffing dollars for land conservation staff. Um, for 2022, it'll be $20,581. So I use that money to offset in the two funds um, any of the increases in health insurance and salaries. So overall, there is we have no increase in our seven funds to the tax levy. And I don't know if you got the sheet um, at Land Conservation. They asked me to put together a sheet that kind of summarizes the seven, you know, comparing the from from last year to this year. Um, we did not get the sheet. It's not on there. Okay, I I I, I I'm sorry. Um, it's probably not on you, Kathy. I think you forwarded it to me. I just kept yep. everything kind of apples to apples with our summary of heats and else. That That's quite all right. So I'll start out with fund 10, which is a general fund. It's our general expenses, plus it's my salary and the secretary's, uh, my, my salary infringes and my secretary's salary infringes. Um, in summary, we have a reduction of $13 and 61 cents in tax levy money. Because we had the increased revenue um, for state aid, and then there is a new that kind of started this year, but it's going coming into traction. Um, there is what's called a Lake Monitoring and Protection Network grant for working on um, aquatic species, and that'll be an annual grant, and we apply for it, and I budgeted some money for that for staff and salaries um, in that in that budget. Um, of the, the savings, there was more than, it was like $513 and $61 worth of savings in tax levy with the, the, the two the grant and the staff increase in staffing grant, um, with land conservation committee and this, uh, department are looking into doing a wild parsnip control demonstration project. It was, they, there's so much of it all over the county and, um, there's some people that are interested, so we're looking to see what we could do with that. So out of that 513, we set aside $500 to at least start that project. That's that's what we have in the budget. So that's fund 10. Fund 64, which is our Mill Creek watershed project. Those are the eight dams and the straightened portion of the stream around Boaz. Um, well, I left it as the basic $2,000 in tax levy to maintain the dams. Um, we got news after I submitted the budget, um, starting in 2023, the county will have to hire an engineer to complete DNR required inspections. Depending on the hazard rating of the dam, it is every two, four, or 10 years. Uh, we are trying to get all our dams reduced to low hazard. We may have one that won't be reduced. I've been working on this for like eight years and they keep changing people and so it doesn't happen. So I'm working on that. Um, the estimate when we met via Zoom with um, NRCS was the fact that it would be probably five to $10,000 each for each dam to do the inspection. Um, we had three for this year, coming up year, 2022, but we convinced the, the county's convinced the Natural Resources Conservation Service to hold off a year because we are in budget process, it's a lot. I mean, for us, it'd be you know, up to thirty thousand dollars for those dams. That's a lot for us to absorb in in short time. It would, and we've talked about the the counties are talking about maybe doing a collaboration effort, so we can go together and say, okay, 
Vernon County has three dams. Richland County has a dam. Iowa County has, you know, so we can maybe get. Do it as one um, that way. So it maybe saves us some money. So X, Y, Z engineering firm knows they have this many dams to work on. Um, we have none scheduled for 2023. So that'll, as far as I know, I kind of look on the schedule. So for sure, 2024, we'd have a dam or two, but not hopefully not for 2023 unless they change it. I also found out yesterday that the DNR may be going to require us to do, and it's a one time thing to set up a bench survey benchmark for all eight dams. Um, if so, then we would need to work with the county surveyor and there may be some expense there to hire him to do it, but it's a one time thing. Our dams were built in the 60s, late 50s, and early 60s. And some of the original benchmarks have now been gone, are gone, and there's no, nothing to tie them back to. <laughs> so that's what we have. I have for Fund 64. Fund 66. So for tax levy for at Fund 64, we're just asking for the 2000 we've been asking for. Fund 66 um, is our cost share account. And most of that is there's no tax levy involved because we do we contract with them, have a project put in, and then we re get reimbursed from this from the state. Um, the last two years there has been five thousand dollars of tax levy put in that fund to pay for the well study. Um, the well testing. The Land Conservation Committee and Department is interested in maybe doing another one more round, at least of well, so we'd have three and maybe do it at a different time of the year. We've done fall and spring and maybe doing another time just to see if there's any what where we are at. Uh, we've gotten approximately 140 to 150 wells tested if I added up right. Um, but we, the, the thought is to do it in 2022. Um, and they would be also interested, they don't think the $500, we don't think the $500 will be enough for this well parsonage study and maybe using either here, or do it, use a little bit more for um, the well parsnip uh, control, demonstration control, or control demonstration. Um, Fund 72 is our <clears throat> planner technician account that that funds the other two staff members and our funds our training. And using the correct uh, 2021 versus 2022, there is no in, uh, there's no increase in tax levy. Been able to cover it with the the increase in funds we've gotten from this we're getting from the state. Um, fund 78 is nursery stock. That's where we where we, the money goes from our tree sales. And that's just that's all it is. It's tree sale money. There's no tax levy dollars involved in that. And you know, we did it, the money just sits there until we need to do something that we don't have a budget for, like replacing computers. Fund seventy nine is our Ash Creek Community Forest. There is no tax levy. Uh, the money that's there is from past timber sales. So any any that's for maintenance, we use it out there, and any. Um, Big projects we're doing, like we're working on a parking lot. We are getting money, some money from the state and a grant to pay for part of it. So we've stretched our money with grants to get the work done out there and with no tax levy. We're looking probably in the next two to five years, and I'm looking at Sean and Melissa because they're on the committee and Mark's been on the committee to do another timber sale. Um, it's getting close to time to doing one, and at that time it'd be Nice to work with the finance and county board to put that money back. They need the timber sale money to go into that account. Then it pay, kind of pays for itself without involving any county tax levy dollars. Our the last fund we have for land conservation is fund 80, which is wildlife damage. Um, there is no tax levy. Uh, the state reimburses the county to pay a contractor to assess damage done by wildlife on agricultural crops. So twice a year, we send in for reimbursement for the money that we spent with the contractor or any abatement that has to be done. Um, mm -hmm. 
but also it's used to pay for the state gives us the money to pay for the processing of donated uh, deer to local food pantries. So this, I don't remember how much it is a deer right now. I think it was like $75 a deer. We paid this last year and lots of pounds of uh, venison people were able to supplement at the food pantry. The plan, basic, the biggest plan in the future um, is um, we're looking at we'll probably be moving to a county owned facility. Um, there'll be savings in in rent, but there will be some initial costs to move, you know, some files, cabinets, equipment, uh, computers, that kind of thing. We'll, uh, computer changes we'll have to look at. So any questions for me on land conservation? Yeah, go ahead. summer quickly. So <clears throat> essentially what you're saying is that because the but the state budget has increased the amount of money for land uh, conservation staff, you are not asking for any increase in tax levy, but your budget does include $5,000 for a well study that if we decided not to do the well study, we would have $5,000 to put in a different pot. Right. Okay. Correct. As we talked about at, our, at the meeting and um, I mean, I think it's important to do the well study, but right. given what we're looking at in broad scope, I think it's important no. to know that there is a $5,000 potential source Correct. if we decide not to do the well study. And that's why I put it in there. Yeah, another 500 bucks for a while, person of control. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be totally transparent. Right. <laughs> might not be as big a priority as patrolling the roads. So. Right. Yeah. What's that? Carson, it hurts your hands. Yes, it hurts your hands, though, but you might get stung. So. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, okay, any questions or comments on the land conservation portion of this? Mr. Chairman. Mr. C. Yes, uh, Kathy, uh, with regard to timber sales, uh, wasn't there some discussion that as county property uh, that the uh, timber sales uh, should go into the general fund? And how was, what was the end of that discussion? Well, every time we've since I've been working work for the county, there's been two, and every time we what we do is we say that show what we could use the money for potential projects and just general maintenance over a period of time, and then what happens? I think it does go to general, but then it's redesignated to land to uh, fund seventy nine. That's the way we. But because the other choice is to put tax levy dollars in, so. Uh, timber sales have amounted to approximately how much when do you make a sale? Twenty five, thirty thousand dollars. I don't remember what the first one because I wasn't county conservationist at the time. Um, I think the last one was like almost nineteen thousand dollars. Okay. That's lasted us. So we've been able to stretch that money for a long time. So it's not a slush fund. No, it, it only gets used for Ash Creek. So what we don't use stays there in the in the county coffers. We use it for annual mowing. We use it for annual mowing. Um, now that we just this year uh, we did work with a scout, potential Eagle Scout, and he did it. Uh, we bought the materials and they um, marked all the trails with different colors. I've heard a lot of good comments about it. So we did, a sign. we did a sign. And then our next big project will be a parking lot. We'll probably this fall, a parking lot uh, at the entrance off of Hillview Drive. Because right now there's just you just pull off the road at a corner and there's hunters and bikers that do that and it's not real safe. So by some uh, means the the county has allowed the Parks Commission the authority to spend that money as they as they decide, huh? Through land conservation, through the budget process, everything's got to go through land conservation. So I don't just uh, the the department doesn't decide how to spend the money. The land conservation. I mean the parks. I mean the land conservation committee. Yes. All they right. Kind of, they, they kind of decide. We talk about things, and they're the ones that make the ultimate decision on what gets done out there. So that the money goes back to the land conservation uh, uh, budget. Right, in fund 79, and it, it doesn't get used, it just stays there. All right, thank you. Okay, Mr. Brewer. 
What is a low hazard dam? A low hazard dam is a dam that there is no, if, if the dam were to breach or break, there is no houses below there that would have, no dwellings below there that would have water at some, some level in the residence. Okay, any other questions? All right, you can go ahead and move on to parks then. All right, parks budgets are fund 65 and, oh, sorry about that, fund 65 and 69. Fund 65 is um, the general park budget. Um, a portion of my secretary's, 10% of my secretary's salary comes out of that budget. Um, it's a non lapsing. Um, the, the, we didn't ask for an increase in tax levy. We left it the same. Um, camping fees go into that. Um, and then there's uh, donation boxes at Rockbridge Rifle Range and um, on the, the Pine River Trail. Um, we do get to know most of our donations come from the Rifle Range for the people that use it, which is um, very, very good. Um, it's a non lapsing account. Some of the future projects we're looking at that we may use some of the funds that are quote, quote unquote sitting in the account that aren't that haven't been used in the past. But some future projects we're looking at is uh, replacing more. The, the commission is looking at not me. They're the ones in charge. Uh, replacing more uh, playground equipment at Pier Park. Um, putting some more primitive campsites on the. I'll call the back side of the rock at Pier Park, just some primitive spot for them to, to go. Um, we just, they just put in, Gary Manning just put in that uh, semi trailer. I haven't been out there, I don't know if the railings are on, but they put the semi trailer across the, the back side of the Mill Creek or of, of the rock. Um, so, hope is that we may end up doing a few things, more things on the back side. As as years go, um, it, we're probably going to have to replace the shooting standards at rifle range. If you get if the shooting standards are the po the steel posts that the we put the boards on so that they can use them for target practice. Um, some year down the road, the commission is looking into it, uh, uh, replacing um, or doing something different with the restrooms at Pier Park and the rifle range. They're not the most handicapped ADA accessible. Um, so that's something that they'll probably look at into grants and other things for to maybe replace them in the year's future. Eventually, and Mark lives right next to it, um, we have to figure out a way to, it's been bad for a long, long time. You probably since it's first been in the Orient boat landing, getting, figuring out how to get because of the current on the Wisconsin River, it's hard for people to pull in there uh, at, at the Orion boat landing. Um, some other things still we may want to look at is working on that resurfacing project out at, on the Pine River tra Trail. Maybe in the future, doing more sections of it as as funds become available. And then um, the other big project would be the potential development on uh, the property near Pine Valley Community Village, maybe work, doing some work with Pine Valley and seeing ways to make it not only like one of the big, they're looking to do a kayak landing and a maybe parking and a picnic area in that area uh, and look at maybe doing a handicapped fishing pier. Some of those would be just more, nothing uh, to help the residents of Pine Valley, get them out, find, you know, and it's close by, they have a place to go fishing, go picnicking, that's another place. Eventually, maybe getting a, a, a quote unquote, a, a sidewalk or away from Pine Valley to get them down. You know, they could take a stroll on a, it, it, somebody could take a stroll in a, in a wheelchair or whatever to get them down there. So that'll be something coming up in the next few years. It's something to look at, Would you know, to develop that a little better. And and I think it'd be an asset to Pine Valley to have a place for residents to go, do stuff they remember doing as, as a kid. Um, Fund 69 is the Snowville Trail Maintenance Grant. Anything to do with Snowville Trails, also there for bridges, um, 
repairs, replacements, uh, trail, uh, fixing places along the trail, and general trail maintenance um, to, uh, for 140 miles of state snowmobile trails in Richland County. It's all state funded. There's no tax levy. It runs from July 1st through June 30th every year. So that's the parks. So the parks account, is that a non-lapsing account? That's a non-lapsing account. I thought I had noticed that there was quite a bit of money sitting in there. All right, and that's that's where we use the the that's where they use the money for the trailer. They're, they're, that's the use is to um and that's the way they'll have to figure out how to budget more, you know, for some of these things that I've talked about above using that money for um, doing some of these projects. Well, yeah, we put $38,000 a year into the parks account, and but I can't remember the figure about what was being carried forward, you know, from 2020 to 2021, but it seemed like a lot of money. I guess I was surprised that the parks department had so much money. I think it was years past. I mean, they just <laughs> budgeted well, um, and they did 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 projects. I guess before I started, they've been doing more since I started and using up some of the money in there. They like um, we they bought. Uh, I don't know if Don was on the committee at the time. We bought spent about six thousand dollars in some playground equipment. And we spent uh, eight or nine thousand dollars on that snowmobile tra of that trailer to put across the the Pine River or the West Branch. So, yeah, so. well, kind of similar to my comments uh, about the fairgrounds, it, it just seems like it'd be a good thing that the parks money was being spent on things that were going to increase revenue to to help offset the the levy. It just seems like a good opportunity. There's people love our county because it's so beautiful and outdoors so why not capitalize off that and use the money for things that are you know more camping you know things okay. that are going to bring in revenue so that's that's why i'm bringing it up it just seemed like a lot of money to be putting and i i'm glad we're putting money into parks it's not that i don't want that it's just it's a lot of money to be put in when we're not using the money we already have that's kind of that's what i'm saying um Lately, the last few years, because of different things, we've used more and more of we've used most of the money okay. that have been budgeted. And I don't remember the figure; it just seemed like a lot. It, yeah, I didn't realize it was that much, but I think they might know the number. You guys know the number. I, I think as of I don't I left that at back the office. Um, there was carried over fiscal year end of twenty twenty was forty three thousand nine seventy nine oh seven. That's a yeah. lot of money sitting around. Yeah, that's okay. what I. That's what that, I. That, and that's why they they went with the the they did what the client or uh, the parks commission decided to go ahead and do that trailer bed right. behind to in, to be able to use the backside of that park and get people all the way around and be able to mold that area back there to open up for more campsites. Where is that at the point? At the point is down by ten. The, 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 oh, the Rock Rockridge part. Oh, one back. by Pine River. I know. Yeah. I'm just only bringing it up so the other folks on the committee know that I it just seemed like a lot of money. Yeah. That was sitting there. And so what they can use it for projects to bring revenue in or give it back. Yeah. And, and, not request 38 grand out of the tax. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mr. C. Yes. Uh, with regard to investment in the, in the parks, uh, uh, if you're looking for a direct return on investment at a specific park, the park fees are not that high, but you have to look at the, uh, the parks, uh, like other natural resources in the county, uh, from the vantage point of tourism, uh, how those uh, resources draw people into the county, uh, and spend their money on motels and uh, restaurants and gas stations. And there, there's a great deal of money that's uh, not counted here in terms of tourism that has to do with the magnetism of our natural resources. So I think that, you know, we have really something to offer uh, 
the uh, people outside of the county in terms of our natural resources. And I, and I think that our parks, uh, uh, investment in our parks, of which we don't have many parks. We have basically one main park. Uh, that's the one at Rockbridge. Uh, we have the Aiken Forest, but uh, we don't, we don't uh, shine our light very much on our resources. And uh, if you look at the total tourism resident revenue to the county, uh, who may want to give more credit to the uh, that investment in the parks? Well, not, I don't disagree with that, but then why not just spend the money to get the tourism in here instead of sitting on it? So, yeah, Supervisor Gentis. I the SR is a new boat landing at SR. The kayak, yeah, yeah, the kayak line. Did, did we pay for that? The county, or who, how did that get there? It's very okay, nice. It's so the, it, the DNR, it's the yeah. DNR property. Um, Southwest partner, Partners paid, the county got a grant, uh, it's a, called County Conservation Aid Grant. It's every year we can apply for it. It's like lower $1,500. So 1558 came from that grant. And then Southwest Partners picked up the rest of it. They they wanted the kayak landing there and the uh, parking for and and for the fishing and every time I drive by there, there's somebody there. Oh so, yeah, I love it. We no. agree to maintain it. We agree to maintain it. So we're paying the park is paying for the mowing. And and who did our county highway department make the parking lot? No, the they had there was a contractor. Okay, any other questions about parks? John, this is Kerry. Yeah, go ahead. So a lot of that money in there for us to take care of that bike trail and that bike trail is in a state of, of disrepair right now. You got grass growing in the middle of it. You got a lot of screens that need to go through there and you got 10 bridges. Now those bridges are usually covered by the snowmobile funding and the money. But if that money was not to become there or available anymore and not being a similar trail, then the county is liable for those bridges to be fixed and repaired. Um, and then a few years back, the county was in a state of where we chose not to want to spend a lot of money to kind of save it because we were in a lot of debt or not really say a lot of debt, but we were in some financial troubles. And so we didn't want to spend all that money. So we were more frugal with it because we didn't know if we were going to keep getting um, our money that was allotted to us. So we have that. And then there's just maintenance of other things with our parks. So I think that money should stay there because there's a lot of stuff that we could do with that. It's just, it's going to take some time for us to get in there to, to, to spend that. Okay. That bike trail is going to be, is our hugest investment that we have as far as cost wise on anything. Richland County's got a history of selling public land and giving it away, then wanting to keep it and use it. So, yeah, and I I understand the bike trail needs a lot of maintenance, so it's great we have the money. So it sounds like we can get some of it done. Okay, thanks for coming today. Thank you. And then I think, does anyone else want to say anything about the parks discussion, the back and forth? that I instigated. Okay. Yes. I would just say that listening to this discussion, our previous discussion about the fairgrounds and utilization thereof, you know, it seems like there's a lot of opportunity to bring together some things here yeah. in, in disparate departments to you know, forward our, our tourism and marketing yes. kinds of efforts. And so how do we go about doing that? Right. It's a key question. Yeah, we seemed a little stuck. In a rut. <laughs> well, that's why we're paying Jason. You know, Jason needs to help with that. That's the best way to get that done. I mean, but are there other? We have. We, can be we have no. We don't have a lot of areas for income, and right there is probably our only area. And we're not even looking at it, or we're looking at it from afar right now. So, there's a lot of things. A lot of things that happen is there's a lot of thought that goes into it, and a lot of talk, <laughs> but there's no action. So we just need to get the action part going, I think. 
Yeah, and Jason Glassbrenner, you're talking, you're yeah. referring to, yeah. yeah. Okay. Marty Richards, does, is that this, what does he do? Does he do? So Marty Richards, um, he is a City of Richland Center employee. He's the tourism director. Right, but that would be, uh, we could be working with him too. Yeah, I, I think, I think between, yeah, Marty Richards and Jason Glassbrenner, knowing that we have a couple entities at the county that, it sounds like he's talking to Carla Dowden at the fairs at, at at the fairground. I don't know, uh, Supervisor Severson, if if you, you all or Kathy Cooper has been talking to, uh, I think she stepped out now, but talking about the parks, you know, and that there is some funding there. And I don't know, maybe he's got some ideas, but it's, I think it is great when there are grants that can help. We can match some of that, use some of that money we have in the bank and get extra money, you know, for it, like with the bike trail, it, our maintenance can go further. So, um, but but I, I agree with Mr. Cooey, it's, we just need some more action because mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff that's sitting in disrepair right now that needs fixed. Yeah. So yeah, Supervisor Lux. How come economic development is not on our list of people who's talking about it? It is, last because your, your administrator failed to put it on there, but I have it uh, scheduled yeah, for until much. here at 4.30 with my Oh, ancillary. Ancillary. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now we have Barb Scott here from MIS and what is what's the acronym stand for? Management. Management Information System. Okay. I always call you all IT when I'm trying to explain it to outside people, but we use yeah, MIS. Okay. Because it's it's more than just IT because we do like radios and phones and okay. that's why we're MIS. Good explanation. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Take it away. Okay. I don't have to tell you to speak into the speaker. No, <laughs> and Don, if you can't hear me, then you better let me know that. Oh, you get an A. All right. <laughs> Um, if you look in our folder, our budget sheet is there. It will start with a, I can cover, there are three sheets in there. The 29 and the 42, those are ones, the 29 is the set aside for video conferencing. And I didn't reduce that because it's money that we set aside for the video conferencing in the court system. And to reduce that's not, not that that doesn't work. You just that's the money you have to set aside every year for your maintenance on your video conferencing system. Now, 42 that is in that file is the money that goes uh, traditionally. We thought of it as the AS 400 set aside account. And again, reducing that account by 10% doesn't make sense. I mean, you can, it just doesn't make sense to do that. Um, and there isn't a 7% increase in health insurance because it's not, it's not employee funded. That's just a side account. So the one we're going to focus on is the 105182, which is truly the MIS budget. Um, when we look at this, you'll see the two columns, the worksheet, uh, that's 2022 request, and then the revised next year budget. And the biggest difference is the salary is regular. Now, the one that we've gone with, it does come in below your uh, request um, with the revised budget. That's a no staffing. Um, and the reason I'll be completely forthright that it does is last year you took $20,000 and you put it into borrowed money for items over 5,000. There was a mistake that was in my favor and it was left both in my current budget and into the borrowed money. So I was honest, I, I went to Clint and I said, hey, I can keep this 20 grand, I'm happy to do it, but that's not really ethical. So you really ought to take that back and by taking that back, I'm actually more than what you wanted on tax levy. So that's how we can do it easily without much being felt. By doing that, we're over, it's a little over $5,000 um, back. Now, I know that there are several departments that aren't able to make the cuts. So you can put it towards that. Um, some of the things that we had to cut, though, we weren't able to increase. One of the borrowed 
things that did not make the cut when Clinton had to do his prioritization of the 1 million uh, was the iPad replacements. Um, so one suggestion, and this is not something you have to do, it is a suggestion, is you could take that 5,000 and put it towards iPad replacements. Just a thought. The other thing we can do with that 5,000 is we can put it towards a contracted position to help support after hours and meetings. Um, again, just today, yesterday, later, we were asked for another meeting that's from five to seven on Thursday. My staff will do anything we always have to support the county. We support 19 departments and I count county board as a department. But again, there are lots of meetings after hours. We have to work to support the normal department during normal hours. And then when there's a meeting after hours, we have to supply staff to do those meetings. With the redistricting now being after hours, which I understand it's not a big deal, we have to readjust more work schedules. And it's okay, but remember what you're asking my staff. We needed to be here before eight today, and that night it'll be 7 30, 8 o'clock before we get done. Those are really long days that my staff is putting in, and we're not expanding the staff hours. So that's one of the things, that's one of the reasons when you look at the budgets and the two columns, the increase was to add more staff to cover some of those hours because we've added a lot onto MIS's plate and we will continue to take that without question. Um, just to give you an idea, the web page, we used to only have 400 visits a week. Now, unique visits, not repeat visits. We get 1,400 to our county's webpage in a week. Um, we'll talk about tickets. This is through July 27th of this year. We've had 2,189 requests for help through the help desk. That doesn't include any of my time because as a director, I don't really do tickets. I do a lot of email. <laughs> I do a lot of uh, director of things like budgeting um, and management of projects, but that stuff doesn't go through the help desk. That type of activity is not accounted for in this. When we look back, it's 275% increase in requests for services to the employees of the county from the department. Can you say that? I'm sorry, one more time. 275% increase. In ticket requests? In ticket requests. Over what period? From the inception of our department in 2012. So, I mean, you're in our staffing went from two and a half people to three. And was the website visits, was that the same 2012 to, to um, yes. last year? Mm -hmm. okay. And you're, you're really expanding a lot. And most of the website increase has been in the last year. It really has, maybe in the last two years, to be uh, completely transparent. But we're building a much bigger presence, which is what the committee, I think, wants. But to keep that pace, it's becoming really difficult with the amount of staff we have. Sure. Requested increase if you were to add staff? Or if we were to staff? add staff, I... Let me switch to my spreadsheets that I submitted because it's hard all the to add up all the salaries without the totals don't show on that. That's Mr. Not. Chairman. Hold on just a second. Let's let's let her think so she can. I'm take just that pulling out. up the document. Jason, you have that document on the budget folder quick. I apologize, I shouldn't have this up on my desk. Yeah, 
The other staffing change that is accommodated in this is the on call pay that we're suggesting for all departments, not just mine. Um, I don't ask John to take on call right now. He is paid at less than a secretary's wage. The secretaries are classified higher than my MIS assistant in our pay grade. And so I don't think that it's fair to request him to take on call at that rate. Jason and I do all the on call. And so Pine Valley Sheriff's Department, Simons are all 24 hour operations. And they all require 24 hour service. Simon's not as much now, but the other two are frequently phone calls in the middle of the night and frequently being more than once a week for certain. So we've done that and now adding this in is for on call pay as well. When you look at the difference, the increase is a total of 87,000 and that would be adding in on call pay in a position and a half. Um, Clinton, do you want to address the position and a half? That would be putting the sheriff's department. We've had discussion on with the new radio tower project being put into place on what it would look like to have an IT person dedicated to a radio tower project of working underneath MIS. Kind of a half time half and MIS, but you know, being an MIS employee essentially kind of being tasked to be the point of contact on a potential new radio tower system and the five to eight million dollar investment we're going to do there. Um, it's a model that kind of works or it's kind of matches and works in Green County from what I've seen where they have their own IT dedicated person. That person communicates with the IT staff. But then they're on scene to handle the dispatch center, the radio tower communications, uploads into the new vehicles, all those types of radio types of deals. Um, and then if there's availability, if there's nothing going on, they can be pulled to augment IT staff in other sectors of the county. So discussion that was was had between uh, Sheriff Porter, Director Scott, myself. And the other piece of that is 911 coordinator position in SOC for another. Project. Okay, so the, the question was, would this be a permanent position or just while the radio tower project was being implemented? I would say this is a permanent position. You're going to have the infrastructure that's going to be there. You're going to have to keep it up. As we're finding right now, in order for us to do this project, you know, we're relying very heavily on MIS staff to kind of uh, shoulder a lot of the technical aspects of it, a lot of the coordinations with Mike Day, our consultant. Uh, Chief Porter is also involved, but obviously he's a little bit more grounded in the law enforcement aspect versus the radio communications aspect. So this is kind of another task that it's found its way onto our MIS plate and stretching them even thinner. Okay, Miss, Mr. Seep, go ahead. For now, I'll let others ask questions. Anyone else? I'm wondering, would it be possible to split? You mentioned a lot of different things. I know. Would it be possible to, and you gave a dollar figure, which is, I appreciate. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible to split them up into different pieces? So it's a little more of like a menu approach rather than a 87 or nothing. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'd be happy to do that. Um, and it will, and that's what, do that. The, the paper sheet that I had sent out this morning is kind of what I'm filling in as we go as making a menu on these are the things we discussed today. This is a dollar amount to incorporate it and to expand our gap or this is an opportunity is the little bit less that we had there to yank out and close the gap. Okay, thank you. So you have that information. I think I've given you most of those pieces, yes. but if you need me to give you more, I'll be happy to sure. do that I'll as well. Reaching out to refine and confirm to make sure that I'm not making false promises. <laughs> that would be appreciated. Okay, anyone else? The other thing we since we did touch on the radio project just a bit is to please keep that in the back of your mind. And it'll it'll be a bonding issue. We know that, but that'll be coming. 
just after the first of the year, I would hope. <laughs> so can I, we do have some time for MIS. Can I ask some more questions for MIS? Yeah. So uh, if we do a radio tower project, as we loosely talked about, I think at our last meeting, for us to be able to do bonding, maintain the same type of a dollar amount of debt service levy, the vision would be to cut into our short-term lending program that we're doing. So that $1 million that we're planning again for next year to make capacity for now a new bonding is to reduce that. That obviously leads then right back into future impacts on operational budgets, because now if we want to do those things with that $1 million, it's going to have to come back through this and have these same conversations and cut and keep processes to make that happen. So please keep that in mind as the overall picture moves forward. The other part of it that I'd want to talk about with you too is on our ARP funds. We had talked about uh, potentially allocating funds to connect our buildings with fiber. And I have you kind of expound on being that smart on it, on why that is a good idea and how it would impact our future. So what we do every month, we pay for bandwidth connection between our buildings. We actually own the fiber between this building and the courthouse. The county owns that infrastructure. And when they redid the highway, we paid to have it put in. We own a piece of fiber that goes from this building down to the sheriff's, or I'm sorry, the police department. That's it. That's all the county owns for infrastructure. What I'd like to do and what Sauk County was actually very successful in doing is put in our own fiber. So we're not paying for that bandwidth every month. It also opens up our ability to be more competitive with uh, contracts for phone and internet because we have more options if we have our own connectivity between buildings. So we would have fiber that we own between here, Pine Valley, Highway, Simons, Extension, and the fairgrounds. Anyone? Mm -hmm. I think like years ago, the state put in fiber at the campus. Wouldn't that be ours? If um, we have John Linda's asking about um, uh, didn't the state put in fiber at the campus a few years ago, and wouldn't that be ours? So that's the question that's being answered. So they did. You are correct, and they did go underneath the creek, which bodes well for us because they put in the infrastructure to do that. So yeah. it helps us. So if we put in our own fiber, I think we only have to come down to the science building and we can ride on that and you're exactly right. So that's gonna help us in this project. But we still have to get our ring down to the science building. What is the annual cost for this? Is it is that road thirty six three thousand fifty dollars? Is that where I see we have it budgeted on page Two of the budget summary. It's a little bit difficult to do that. I think unless you're looking at the overall budget for the county, because the um, that's paid for. It's divided out by the clerk's office. They get one bill per month from genuine for bandwidth. Oh. Um, they put one quarter to the sheriff's department, a quarter to HHS, and I think those those might not be the right. Yeah. And then. The rest is divided out between departments. Is that correct? Yes, I believe so. So each department pays for their internet bandwidth access? Uh, to a point, yes. And then we might have a little bit of a common account where, yeah, it says it's called internet bandwidth access. That's the expense row under general government. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 3050. Yeah. So some comes from department, some comes from this 110. Expense it's account, probably like five side of a couple different ways. So okay. So the total expense is what? Um, I believe it's fifteen hundred dollars per month times twelve per year, and that expense would be eliminated if we owned our own bandwidth, our own fiber. Mr. Um, Chairman. Anna, but it would be significantly less. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Seed? Yes. Uh, I, I wonder if Barb could tell us whether 
anyone has done uh, a pro forma with an ROI analysis of her proposal or her suggestion. Has anyone? We have not cost it up yet to see what a return on investment and how many years into the future would be before we broke even, John. It's kind of a, a thing right now where we're just gauging on the feasibility and seeing if there's enough interest in it to really have somebody come in because it, it would probably almost require a specification design to understand it to even understand or to get what the cost is. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, could you repeat what Mr. Langris had to say? I haven't done that yet. <laughs> I, I didn't hear what he said. Yeah. It... We need commitment before we ask the vendor to come in and do that because it would cost money to do the ROI study. Yes. Okay. And mine. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, Supervisor Luck. Um, so we also have this radio tower project where we're talking about potentially having the fiber backbone coming down from the people we just agreed to give some of the recovery money to. Mm -hmm. Is that a part of this plan as well to connect that with our infrastructure here, the whole thing, or? We don't have any buildings that are out where, they, where we gave them the money to do it. We don't have any needs there, okay. unfortunately. My thought was, we do have bunker tower out there though. And so if we can ride on their fiber out to there for free, we should do that. <laughs> and it, it would be something that if we were to have to put up a green field site and actually have our own location, then we would probably walk fiber to our building just for monitoring and then be able to bring services back off of that location. And Mr. Seep, they were just discussing a little bit the radio tower out at Bunker Hill and the, the Laval grant telephone co-op um, grant money that we gave them. Thank you. Okay, anything else for MIS? Great. Thanks for being here all day with us and thanks for taking your turn here. Thank you. Okay, so next up we've got register and probate at two o'clock. So do we want to move anything upward? Then? Do, you, do you want to have some county administrator stuff? Maybe we could take yeah. a 10 minute recess and then come back and start chewing on some of that. Or we could just go to county administrator. What do you, do you all want a break or do you want to keep going? <laughs> I'm all right, keep going, keeping going too. You may want to move the microphone closer to Clay. Yes, I will do that. Yeah. All right, we're going to move to county administrator next. For those online. Okay, I'll be kind of briefing off of the summary that's found in the August 20th folder underneath preliminary budgets. You'll find the uh, summary administrator's office. I'll give everybody a minute to pull that up. Well, we were talking about class and the project and all that stuff. And the money. I know on the school board, we went through some stuff and basically refinanced the bonds to get it a better rate. Put yeah. the whole field in. Does that, do we have the same type of option at the level as we did at the school? You could refinance the bonds and when we're doing another big bonding, that would be something to be uh, appropriate to look at. Yeah, I'm just curious if that was, you know, because when we're talking about five to eight million dollars for this tower thing, you have an opportunity to, to look at that just to see if it's beneficial to do it. Yeah, we'll be spending the money. We'll have to get the Moody's rating and all those other types of things to do that. So that would be our a target opportunity. Which ones were you asking about refinancing? What I hope just in general. Yeah, you, I, you know what I mean. I don't know yeah. if the Pine Valley one or or some. You know what I mean. 
something that has a large amount on it. You know what I mean? If it was refinanced correctly, it may not show anything to the taxpayer and we'd get considerable amount of money. I mean, that's basically what happened when we the softball field. So. Good to go, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Okay. Uh, several funds that we're going to be talking about today. So 